a lot of uh my life I had a deep rooted want to help people know why I have I've seen a lot of very horrible things in both major and minor ways major and subtler ways, I guess would be a better way to put it, over the course of my well, as of right now, short life. seen how other people's extensive and Total self-centered actions have hurt thousands. How oh, they've hurt me. And how they're problematic self-centered actions have hurt themselves whether they realize it or not With that, from my want to help others and myself, came loads of research. Also, for just my own curiosity and interest. of my morality, my philosophies toward life, what ideologies I favored, that 
guess. Even if you have a willingness to listen to others and try and gain some insight into a different perspective, psychologically people, I guess, seem to have Yes, subtle intellectual complexes. And that is especially true with people who have leaning narcissistic traits or narcissistic personality disorder. Nevertheless, uh, one part of my morality was that I did not want to, if I could help it, dismiss people. Let my, in terms of behavior, more dismissive tendencies. Somewhere down the line, I think I picked up on me being more dismissive than I ideally believe that I wouldn't be in different scenarios. Realistically, wanted. Amongst other things. And I'm not going to go into everything that's happened uh, to me over the last, well, over my whole life. mentioned in my 10th part of Exploring Ottawa, when I was by the Rideau grounds, I think I finally have the proper words to articulate uh, what I've been feeling with my morality crisis. And to a lesser extent, but still an extent, so hard, uh, my existential crisis. And uh, that 
really just starts off with one seemingly simple but really convolutedly intricate question. Are you not just doing the same thing? by what the hell I mean by that. What do you mean? Am I just doing the same thing? That's pretty vague. Well, seemingly vague. Uh, I mean, are you not just uh, either blatantly or subtly acting the same way as someone you aren't very... favorable towards, you don't think much of a liking to, or someone you downright despise, or in terms, more specifically in terms of ideologic views, um, are most of you not just in small, minor ways doing the same thing as your, uh, I mentioned in my before leaving the cottage videos, I believe it was part two. That, uh, the reason that, uh, I, well, ultimately left the city of Toronto to go on this journey of understanding, I guess I'll call it, in a more, uh, pretentious way to word it. that um, life became too contradicting. Far too contrary. Uh, in many ways, Life has only gotten more contradictory the longer I've been on this adventure. some examples I can give. Well. <sighs> the 
recently, uh, I got into an argument with someone. And just in daily life, I've really seen them uh, get very agitated or frustrated uh, with people around them or just upset over really what I would consider to be minor things. They, um, they can be dismissive, but, uh, Overall, with people around them, they can be irritable. And yet, when I speak to this person on a more um, well, common ground understanding in terms of uh, we're able to level with each other, points they've told me uh, as so have lots of people in my life uh, told me you need to let go of anger well you don't People, especially in my family, would uh, say, um, you're a very, uh, you have anger issues, you need to try letting go of anger, be more forgiving, understanding, and yet those people um, would, uh, Let's use an example of when I was staying at the cottage in the village of Crow's Landing. My relatives, one particular, called me a very angry young man, which is true. It's absolutely true that I have internalized anger, but besides the point. Tell me that uh, they were once like me as well. They learned to... Uh, in essence, calm down. No, you didn't. You all get, like, very passive-aggressive at the most minor of things, or very sarcastically aggressive. Very, uh... Very agitated, uh, or would get agitated at the. Well, if someone caused a problem, from my knowledge of psychology, that in some way stems from, well, anger. Can at least. Someone would often tell me that, uh, I need to practice saying more kind words to them, to people, not throw such harsh terms about, like, uh, schizoaffective disorder or bipolar disorder or histrionic personality disorder or heavy egotistical traits. And yet, uh, they'd, uh, send me a 
array of uh, text messages calling me selfish, telling me how I've always been selfish. To eat a nice big slice of humble pie and just uh, live with uh, hell. As well as uh, getting completely belligerent with me, uh, screaming matches between me and them. So, um, you don't let go of anger. Unless in some sense people mean, I'll get angry now, but then I'll just let go of it. Well, to that I say, that's ludicrous. What's the point of uh, saying let go of anger if you're just going to keep doing it? And, uh, okay, I'll just let it go now. And then uh, two days later, something else is going to make me completely irate. I don't know if any of these people have a uh, aggressive behavioral disorder in some way, but maybe. Last one. Example. It's another one. Pull from the uh, political commentary world. It's funny how people who are rightists or identify with ideologies and uh, moral stances that uh, are more on the right wing of the political spectrum. Hmm. Well, let's call it what it actually is, the uh, political circle. the right curve of the political circle. Uh, you could pull from any number of saying like uh, abortion rights, people are more pro-life, uh, who are more um, more capitalists in terms of their economic beliefs. or have more uh, well more Nazis in the belief that uh, of well, claiming ethnic superiority uh, fascist in that way People who are uh, feel that things like transgenderism or the fact that there are, by scientific 
proof. 71 genders or different gender expressions, sexualities, or sexual attractions that a lot you could point to their, them not being problematic in nature. Uh, or a, more a prejudice towards things like that of the sort or cultural traditions associated with them. Um, of the sort. <sighs> Yet, uh, many of them will claim uh, that the government is taking away their right or whatever country they're in. Many claim that a uh, more either, I guess, uh, liberal leaning or, well, performative leftist uh, government is, uh, well, taking away their right to uh, freedom of speech, um, freedom of expression, freedom, uh, freedom of choice, and yet, um, they're just, uh, doing the same thing pretty well. Let's say an abortion protest, uh, because I did see a video of well, relating to this recently. Uh, actually, let's use the example itself. There was a man who was uh, a protest that was pro-life. They were abortion abolists. And uh, a woman was uh, going on about, uh, talking about, well, a right to not only bodily autonomy, but um, medical that the medical procedure is needed in instances of sexual assault, and also people who engage in sexual intercourse who it's well, more dangerous for them to actually carry a growing fetal cell in their uterus all the way to well. Final term, giving birth. And they're basically just saying, well, you shouldn't be doing this. It's pretty cruel. It's pretty ignorant. And then the man responds, I can do whatever I want. How dare you tell me what to do? I can protest here if I want to. Stand here. I, mean, I can do what I want. It's my body. I can do it. I don't know how a man couldn't uh, smell the reek of his hypocrisy. Oh, it's my body, I can do what I want, but she can. It's better, or in a sense, let's say the man was more aggressive, meaning aggression in terms of traits, behavioral traits, was had more sociopathic personality traits uh, it was more domineering let's say it was uh, it's better for him psychologically to get it out that way uh, relieve his tendencies through the method of aggregating others but she can't damn him if it's psychological Let's say, uh, oh, and before anyone goes on a hissy fit uh, or isn't going to watch the video full through, don't worry. I'll, I'm going to bring up my problems with the left as well and the center. I'm not only going to be slandering the right. Don't worry. Don't worry.
say, uh, someone who believes in the capitalist ideology. They believe that, uh, free market and, uh, Hoarding of resources, exploitation of land in terms of property rights, and uh, gaining your own wealth is, um, I guess, from an objectivist sense, is uh, the only true way that um, humanity can survive. And yet, they, on the daily, just complain that, um, my god, these prices are so high. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous how out of control inflation is getting. Or, uh, say, some, just, I guess, most average people, uh, someone went up to complain to a poor cashier, uh, as if it's their fault that they set the prices for a corporation, um, that, how dare you people charge, like, 1695, 16.95, my mistake. How dare you charge 16.95 for a uh, uh, rolls of toilet paper? How dare you do that? It's ridiculous. Everyone's everyone's got their bills to pay. The hydro companies. Mistake. Hydro companies, electrical bills are through the roof, racking them up. Water bills are getting expensive. My landlord is uh, charging me 500 a month now. But how dare you charge me 16.95 for this? And then you, you ask that person, hmm, what do you think of capitalism? Oh, I think it's good. I think it's, uh, I think it's gives us worth to life. It's our only means of uh, survival, free market, making your money, getting your pay. It's fantastic. Oh, uh, let's use uh, this. Uh, let's say, um. People on the right claiming that, um. The LGBTQ plus is, uh, violent. Or. The community is. Trying to assimilate your children into. Sexual perversion. Or that sex workers, let's say, are trying to no. I'll be a part of it, but I'll come back to that. Let's just keep it with the LGBTQ plus for now. The community is uh, full of degenerates, sexual deviants, and uh, they're trying to indoctrinate your children into well problematic sexual fetishes such as 
pedophilia and pedophilia, or pedophilia. And that, uh, overall, they're a violent and, uh, segregating group of people. You get very uh, defensive when someone is just calmly trying to talk to you from that group of people. You resort to intimidation because of aggressive tendencies. Or, in terms of the violence, most of you uh, are so for your love of your precious firearms, which I know for a fact is just, there are those who hunt with them. And then there are those who definitely have a, secretly have an obsession. Uh, I would have called an unhealthy obsession with um, lethal weaponry. Some sort of maybe it makes them feel uh, like they have control. Maybe they have domineering behavioral disorder, uh, or they're insecure about their self esteem and it makes them feel like their ego is bigger than it actually is. Or, uh, well, this one applies to left, right, and center. In terms of what was a desired profession for myself, sex work. Uh, in terms of right for in terms of those who are toxically masculine of what would be called psychological patriarchy. It's funny how many people uh well people men who have uh toxic masculinity and women who have internalized misogyny. Funny how many um will degrade someone who does that work. Particularly women who do that work. For whatever the reason may be whether it's because of childhood trauma or because of a passion that they formed to have for it. Either way, it's funny how many of those people will then at their little group get-togethers uh, talk about scandalous things they've done in terms of sexual behavior little posses will just um, well you all be very like keen to joke about uh, 
sexual activity in terms of people's looks, um, or in terms of the cis male community, you'll all be keen to talk about um, how sexually vigorous someone looks, um, or in your eyes, how they look sexually vigorous. not trying to be sexual. Uh, or you'll be uh, all gung-ho, happy, uh, like, locker room talking about the latest pornos you've watched, or going to the clubs and getting a very intense lap dance from one of the oh-so-nice workers. But, uh, yet, when you, when it comes to actually how you feel about those people as a person, um, it's, nah, they're all just, uh, they're sexually deviant, they're sexual deviants, and they're just, um, well, they're, uh, they're just degenerates. They're whores. They, uh, they have a lot of psychological trauma. And now nah, I wouldn't want my child doing that. Like, I, 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 I use it, but, um, no, but I don't want, uh, people in my life doing that. No, oh, I think it's weird. I think it's gross. Or in relation to pornography, in terms of people's views towards standardized film, um, relating to performers, actors, uh, you'll all be um, so clap, clap, clap at the Oscars and the Grammys or the Game of the Year awards to uh, praise actors who have gotten risked it all and gotten nude on film or performed in a sexual way intimately with a co-worker, co-star, in the story, um, on camera, whether or not it's for sexual arousal, well, one is for sexual arousal, the other just being to portray intimacy in some way, but, um, be so eager to praise them. But, uh, yeah, when it comes to a pornographer, you just, uh, no. It's, uh, sexual perversion. They have, they have hypersexuality, nymphomania, sex addiction. They're, uh, illegitimate people. Even though we damn well know in psychology that, um, a child can, or they say, well, you're a danger to society. What if children saw this? Uh, well, you damn well know that a sex scene in a standardized film, whether it's for sexual entertainment or not, well, yeah, it can induce some form of, well, no one's there to talk to them about it. It can induce problems in them. Sexual fetishes. You're fine, uh... Or... Regardless, again, what it's portraying, whether it's for sexual arousal or not. You're fine, um, in terms of... Social relationships. Oh... Actors live... Uh, famous celebrities live great lives. They're, uh... They seem to be happy with their uh, spouses and all that and praise them for their great performances while getting naked on film or being very sexual on film but uh, then you claim that a prostitute or a pornographer oh they can't have good social relations while being intimate in that way it's uh, yeah
Now let me pick on the left. There's a lot of people on the left who, um, like believing that, um, when it comes to protests against, um, oppressive forces, that, um, morally it is justifiable to use violence as, or violent insurrection, not even really just protests if, well, it's a last resort, but a violent insurrection, uh, Uprising as a means to political betterment. Well, uh, or along with that, there's a lot of people who seem to think that you really shouldn't have sympathy or empathy for um, people who are oppressors. That, um, Oh, that they should just be killed, I guess. Kill the capitalist overlords. Throw them out. Put us in place. They made their choice. Hm. How are you any better? Someone who murders and pillages and puts people in economic disparity. Uh, but my stance of psychology is uh, sociopathic. And it works the same way around, same way the other way. So I'm the opposite end. You having lack of understanding as to how they came to that position in the first place. Uh, using violence to get yourself into power. Trying those who have caused you wrong in violent ways. Killing them. Taking joy in their, uh... Well... Either... Death or just, I guess, their downfall in... Their place in society. How are you any better? As far as I'm concerned, uh, the in terms of wanting someone dead, uh, it doesn't matter whether they have wronged you or not. I'm going right exactly by psychological fact, and it's not even... Well. Opinions are formed by facts. Your opinion will be determined by a fact, if it is, if your opinion is science-based, but fact is that is a sociopathic tendency or trait. I know people don't like hearing these labels thrown around at them. Too fucking bad. If you want to claim that, uh... Violence is the only way to dismantle oppressive forces... Effectively? Well... Morally... That just leads you- you're just condoning the same behavior that your oppressor uses on you. Really, in essence. Now, people can claim, oh, well, it's for the greater good, or, uh, we have no choice. Well, it really doesn't matter. They're still doing, in essence, the same thing.
still, uh... You're still just imploring the same tactics that someone has used to destroy your life. There are those who say, um, financially, I guess this is more of a centrist, uh, angle. You need to look out. Uh, I don't like how the world is right now, but right now you're not going to be of use to anyone until, um, you get yourself into a better place. Let's speak for finances here. So save as much of your own finances for yourself as you can. But yet, and if you see someone struggling financially, hmm, wish them well, but don't pitch in to help them. How are you any better than the per than the systematic forces that put you in the place that you are now? How are you any better? In terms of artistic creation, let's go with that, back to that, I guess, in some regard for yourself. We talk about how art can inspire people to do Fantastic social work in the world. Get people thinking about creative ideas that could help make a difference in things, your life, others' lives. Aid in real humanitarian work on just a uh, philosophical sense, I guess. And you use social problems, problems that have been plaguing civilizations across the globe for centuries, people's social systems, psychological health, physiological health. It's just human struggle try and portray it, or human compassion. You try and portray it in a way to uplift others or inspire others in some way for those who do. But yet, all you really focus on is your art. You don't really do much of any... You're more... You prioritize more so your ability to make the art than... and just... putting those concepts into your art. The concept of... or prioritize the concept of using art and entertainment to help better someone's life. You prioritize that more than going out and acting upon those concepts in your arts and bringing them to fruition in real life.
And I would have said, well, that's the part of your own self-interest. And you didn't want to, and that those people didn't want to ultimately become revolutionaries or activists. Full-blown, at least. But they can aid, can't they? Financially. Give financial support. Participate in protests. Can't they? Well... I don't know how much good that actually does anymore. On the one hand of that, and on the other hand as well, well, if it can, I sure as hell don't see many other artists doing it. The sad thing is, you can never really, in terms of financial aid, You can't really know where it goes unless you directly give it to the, well, fund, directly give it to the people who are in some amount of control of the aid work. An example of me, well, example. I wanted to do writing my games, making pornography, and um, things of the sort. I wanted to redistribute loads of my wealth. If there was ever a point where I would have been able to yearly, let's say, Make an annual net worth of uh, 15 million dollars a year. I would have done everything in my power to make it so that I gave away enough money to make it so that my yearly net worth was, um, what's a livable, comfor comfortable living amount. Anywhere from 200000 to 400000 a year. Enough to make $15 million go down to 300000 or 400000 Go from ultra-rich to lower upper, upper middle class bordering standardized middle class last I checked in terms of Canadian currency <sighs> there are also those on the left who um, in terms of who are in the more communist or socialist community who believe that uh, we should redistribute our wealth and resources because it'll help us lead, lead more selfish lives for ourselves be I guess more hedonistic or leaning egoistic terms of philosophy. Is there are many who believe that um, we're all inherently selfish. Maybe we are. Well, you can't deny that we act in selfless ways. Whether or not we have half and half of selfish and selfless tendencies, or if we are entirely selfish, well, 
And really, what is stopping someone from just hoarding their wealth? Not redistributing it. Oh, and I think people really get confused what I mean by when I say what is stopping. Yeah, nothing is literally, like, physically stopping you. I know that. Uh, here's a better way to word it. Why shouldn't you? We're getting down to just, like, the most metaphysical sense. Why shouldn't... Really, if everyone is entirely selfish, selfish for them... More... Overall, more, um... Heavily egotistical. Well, someone could swing around and just say, Well, why shouldn't I? Why shouldn't I just keep it for myself? die, so might as well hoard what I can while I can. They're completely self-centered and sociopathic. They don't really care how they affect anyone else. They don't understand empathy. It's just like, well, I'll live my life until I die. Pick another one. Let's say, uh, anarchists, anyone who identifies as an anarchist, or a libertarian. I talked about how there's fine lines between the two ideologies. But, uh... If you're someone who, um, identifies as this, and you, so, you feel in terms of anarchism, let's say that, that there should really be no socially constructed systems. Feel that maybe human life is too vast, too varying, to really exact any true control over, and, or any true beneficial control over. Or in a libertarian sense, you believe that there really should only be some slight control in terms of governmental force over a set society. But then everything, acting as an external factor, leaving people within an internal social system to, or in the internal social systems of a society, to just be amongst themselves. Provide minimalistic policing and just leave people to their own devices policing only being used in, like, extreme, extreme circumstances. Well, if you're a libertarian, and 
you call the police, say, for somebody... Well, verbally harassing you, or not leaving, say, property that is yours, in terms of, well, like, say, an establishment of some kind. Or you call the police, or say say you do it for that, or then you also, uh... Call the police for... Someone... I can't think of another friggin' like that right now. Uh, if you call the police a lot for like problems that you're having, if someone else is causing you a problem, something that can be deemed illegal or unsafe, well, and you're a libertarian or an anarchist, well, then you're just endorsing that system. Where's the line drawn of where, in terms of someone who believes in libertarianism, where's the line drawn for what you don't consider to be a policeable offense? Like, something that you wouldn't call the police for. That you think is too much. Control. Exacted by a governmental force. And if you're an anarchist, as far as I'm concerned, you shouldn't be calling the police for anything. If you morally believe that no real government system or policing system can truly work and or is more detrimental to the health and well-being of people in any sort in any sort of community or set social environment overall you shouldn't be calling them whether that's physical assault Property damage. Verbal harassment. Stalking. Whatever else. And to someone who does do that, you claim you don't agree with it, are you not just doing the same thing as people who endorse a more republican type governmental system or just more I guess even blatant authoritarianism you're not just endorsing that it really doesn't um, matter how much uh, when it comes to all this it doesn't really matter how much people talk and say that they morally agree with this or morally disagree with that or um, think that this is a or it doesn't matter how much you protest something whether in large or small ways if you're still going to use that thing or in essence do the same thing how are you just in any way different? How is that better? No, and more so, I guess, how you really have no right to be calling yourself whatever you're identifying. Whatever ideology, philosophy, moral stance you're identifying with, you really have no right to. Here's another example. This is more of a personal example, I guess I'll bring up right now. I recently spoke to a friend of mine on the phone. They told me that they had gotten into doing sex work with their partner. And I was happy to hear, well, I'm happy to 
and what my morals were, I'm happy to hear that. I was. But yet, the way they... This person also identifies as an anarchist, and or an anarcho-communist, for redistribution of wealth. They've also in the past told me, like, they don't, if they think that someone is a detriment to someone else, that's, uh, well, they don't want it, uh, they think it's morally wrong if you're being overly detrimental to someone else. I can remember conversations we had relating to when I was actually going to drop out, closer to dropping out of high school, about a problematic teacher who I got involved with the school uh, in trying to deal with. I believe it is, well, that's the story for another time. But uh, they, I recall them saying that uh, if someone is a detriment to children's health, they didn't want it dealt with. So they'd agree with me, I guess, that causing mass detriment is a problem. And yet, when they were talking to me about um, doing sex work, um, I'm not going to lie, their attitude towards it, well, for lack of better, a better way to phrase this, it sounded like uh, CEO shit. It really did. Like just gain some extra money on the side, like keep the customers happy. Uh, well, just run a business as a business. Just, it, it sounded like, I, I felt like I was talking to a CEO. Similar attitudes are also shared between people, for some reason, uh, people who, especially in relation to sex work, um, people who have talked to me about how they don't think um, your, what you love doing or you're passionate about should become a job, if you have a hobby that you're passionate about, um, or say in relation to art, you should do it because you love doing it, not because um, it brings in finance overall. But yet, when it comes to sex work, it's just, uh, oh, money's money. Just uh, get your fill, pay the bills. Yeah, if you have to be very personally intimate physically for that, eh. It's, um, it's all very contrary. Oh, another thing someone said to me, uh, in relation to a restaurant job that I had here in Ottawa, the first job I had here in Ottawa, in relation to why I quit because of food being improperly cooked, they said morally... Well, they thought in a practical sense that I should report it to Health and Safety. If you follow me and you've watched these videos, you'll know I didn't do that. I thought it was too much policing, too much control. I didn't want to morally endorse it. And I also talked about how I really do... Recently, I've talked about how I do feel that morality is practical. 
practical in terms of how humans behave. What you endorse is good social values. But this person then, when I when they said that they thought it was my duty, I guess, to report it to public health, when we later got into a conversation about um, be talking about in terms of problematic sexual, in relation to sex work, problematic sexual fetishization, or like over-fetishization or over-sexualization, um, or things that, in essence, I guess I would consider to be just not good to really fetishize at all. Um, they said, I don't think you should be morally assigning, like, you shouldn't be pushing your morals onto me or anyone else for, like, engaging in this. Well, you just did the same thing to me. You thought it was right for me to report it to public health. By your stance, you thinking that it was ethical of me to that I should have reported it to public health. Well, you're imposing your morals onto me. And I did it to you. That's why I really don't believe that there's really don't believe that, um, I really don't think anyone actually can be anti-moralist with how my ethics have been. I have said that I am a, well, I mentioned in my, it was either in the, uh, No Not November video or it was in, um, the is porn better with or without storylines video it was one of the two where I said uh, I am a moralist and I really think well anyone who says that you should be doing something yeah that's morals you're imposing your morals on someone so And right now, um, am I not just doing the same thing? In terms of everything that I've just kind of said, um, I am acutely aware that, yeah, I did just, even I, with my own words, I dismissed, um, just, I guess, you, the audience, um, in this video earlier. And I just said uh, people really don't like being labeled things in terms of psychology or personality psychology. And I said, too fucking bad. Well, hey, I guess that's hypocritical of me. That's dismissal in some form. And before I knew uh, how psychology works, yes, this is like we all have these personality characteristics, behavioral tendencies in terms of our mentalities some amount of tendencies relating to certain things. But, either way, I'm still just doing the same thing, I guess. Here's from mine. Uh, I'm anti um, forced labor enslavement, say, let's say, of, like, potential child labor, or, uh, wage labor workers who work for barely livable pay. I'm against that. And yet, uh, I know for a fact that the phone that I have the tripod that I'm using that I bought from Walmart because I couldn't go to any, I, the cheapest thing to buy. So I couldn't really afford anything else in terms of trying to save my finances. 
Uh, I know damn well it was made by labor workers. And I know damn well they were both made, like the parts that were used to create them were made by low-wage, um, just, just slave labor workers. Walmart is, over the years, has absolutely, has been accused, and in a multitude of instances, there's so much proof that they use, like, enslaved child labor, forced child labor. Sweatshops to make, the, the, the buyers that they get a lot of their supplies from, um, have heavy involvement in it. And yet, uh, I'm using it. I also use a cell plan that I purchased. Well, I, I have a cell plan on my own now. That's run by Rogers, a mega corporate conglomerate that has a monopoly, absolutely on the tech industry in terms, well, the phone industry in terms of satellite cellular connections. I use them because I need to call people, talk, I want to, I know I want to, and yet I'm out here screaming, damn you, you ultra-capitalist dictators. When I was working the restaurant job over the summer when I was living in the village of Crow's Landing, someone who's become a good friend of mine, who shared a lot of ideals with me, on the day the day that they took me into the city of Peterborough to gather necessities for what was supposed to be my solo trip up here to Ottawa in my side-by-side -side, through the back roads in the countryside, I, I opened up to them about everything that had happened to me, why I was even in the countryside in the first place having left Toronto. And I distinctly remember them telling me that, sadly, in their eyes, life is contradicting. Like, by its nature, life is contradicting. At the very least, human life is contrary by nature. I knew that nothing in this world will ever be perfect. But, uh, I didn't know, I didn't really think that life was contrary by nature, I guess I'd say. I just thought people were, well, too fragile of beings to well humans can only have opt optimum function like the best they can possibly 
muster. Is any of what I just said in this entire video or anything that I've been saying for my whole life true? Or anything that I've said, any beliefs that I hold or that I had held before, are any of them potentially true, could work well? I don't know. I don't know at all. Here's another one as well, I guess I'll say, relating to violent revolution. It doesn't really matter on what side it is. Oh, yes, let's use the example of anarchists as well. A common theme in the principles of anarchy is that, um, once someone exerts control over, and this is just literally in relation to anarchy in this sort of way, once someone exerts control over someone else, well, in some way, or over bearing control, that is no longer anarchy. You have exerted some amount of authoritarian force over them. Well, then uh, your violent revolution, uh, or in terms of, say, something like Marxism, or with Marxist-Leninism, uh, dictatorship of the proletarian, well, that goes right down the drain. Your idealist anarchy go like whoosh. Because to exert violence over someone else, um, even if it is for your ability to live a better life, is exerting control. It's using force. To get something to get a power structure that was in implemented before out. Or on every side of the political circle. Right, left, center. People often say to not uh, generalize, or at least well many on the left say to not generalize, but yet when talking about things just in daily life, people do. People generalize. They're not um, careful with their wording. So, uh, where am I going with this point? Well, uh, oh yeah, you're gonna die any second. Because of the many contradictions, it seems, in the existence of human life. Well, this culminated, if you remember, I've talked about months ago, me becoming incredibly suicidal. 
amongst other things contributing to it. But that was absolutely the main looking back from the main reason. And no, going on sertraline and antidepressant will help me get out of my majorly suicidal state. It didn't stop the, uh, well, the unsettling feeling, not feeling, the knowledge, uh, the feeling caused by the knowledge that, um, Everything is just behaving exactly like the things that they're claiming they're not. Or people claim that they're not. It's just very subtle. Or hell, it might even be blatant, it's just people are too... In Competent to really take much notice to it. And that led me to fleeing Toronto. to see the external world firsthand, outside of my own research, finally. Because I have been suffering an existential and morality crisis. Most of my teenhood, my teenage years, maybe even a lot of uh, my younger life in smaller ways, but I'll just be more specific there. So, in terms of my points of life being very contradictory. I've decided... No, I haven't decided now. I decided... seven months ago... that, uh... I'm not killing myself... until find out whether there is really truly a solution to the contradictions of this world. Whether there really is actually truly hope for humanity. I think I'm what would be referred to as, in some regard, in psychology. I don't know if this is the official term for this. But uh, I've heard it thrown around in the online psychiatric community somewhat. Uh, being casually, or I guess, I guess I'm casually, or I'm quietly suicidal.
well. That suicidality comes from how human nature seems to be just, well, a lot of jumbled contradictions and unfortunately a lot of self-centeredness. I mentioned in my skit I made about being a pornographer towards the end. I was wondering if really deep down everyone is what would be considered so sociopathic. The personality disorder of psychopathy. Lack of empathy and sympathy. Whether uh, whether people really can actually understand something to the slightest degree from someone else's perspective. Or, um, whether we are really empathyless. And we just either, there are those who are aware of it, put on a false persona uh, just to manipulate and get what they desire, or they just stay away from other people as it's on the spectrum of antisocial personality. <sighs> and they're just confined to themselves, or if there are people who just don't realize that they're sociopaths and, uh, well, just act in unempathetic ways. Of course, there are people, yes, I feel that, what I thought before. There are obviously people who are sociopaths, have sociopathic personality disorder, and don't realize it. I'm wondering if that's just human nature. And we can point to, well, there's long biological evolutionary evidence that people had compassion and empathy for each other. People functioned in social ways. They weren't entirely egotistical, or at least solely just self-serving. Or at the very least, if we are all inherently selfish, that uh, we function for our own selfishness in selfless and social ways. Well, now I'm just wondering if anyone, if most people throughout history really have just put up a front. It really is easy, I guess, for others to just read human, well, read other psychological makeup and uh, know their, their interests, their vulnerabilities, and just, gain something for themselves from it, whether, again, they know it or not. We know science can be wrong. Maybe the entire field of neuroscience has been wrong for centuries, or sociology, or philosophy. Or biology. Maybe it's uh, sadly been wrong. Now, from a logical standpoint in psychology, if I was to believe that, that would be, I'd consider that to be a psychotic belief, some form of psychotic disorder. Well, here's the differentiation for how I diagnose psychosis. Uh, is if there's little to no proof of that being what someone is claiming being true, that at the very least can be provided just even like so much as by questioning.
and if they're making a definitive claim to it, an exact statement, absolutely certain of it, that it's true. There is no doubt in their mind. I make no definitive claim on anything. In actuality, if I say, like, yes, I'm sir, like, if I say yes, uh, or I think, yeah, that is this way, uh, just know going forward, I don't claim, like, internally, I don't claim anything. Maybe that is just a, well, the way I'm used to talking in terms of my uh, speech patterns, um, my phrasing. But no, I am not certain of anything. So, um, whether people are just all sociopathic fully, whether in a more misanthropic sense, people really are just destructive by their nature, they cannot function well no matter what system it is in, even in the slightest ways. Uh, well, whether there really is the potentiality for what I would have called optimum utopia, utopianism, or adequate utopianism, or satopianism, whether that is that. Potentiality is even there. Whether it's something like self-maintaining altruism, having your own self-interest while also helping others achieve their goals and wants and self-interest, uh, whether any of that. Whether people can just function, have some sort of beneficial function together. Whether that's even possible to a larger extent than what it is now, what it's what it has been throughout history, or if it'll just keep, if some benefit does come in a societal setting or even in your own internal life, it'll, if it'll just keep slipping back into problems inevitably because people will forget or people will misunderstand misinterpret whether that's just uh, inevitable well all of it I don't know and I'm not um, all that those questions which for the longest time combined with contradictory nature of things it seems uh, made me heavily depressive helped fuel my major depressive disorder and uh, made me suicidal. Well, I decided I'm not killing myself until I um, see this world, see if there is actual benefit to human nature, whether people in terms of my morality crisis will actually act upon the morals that they hold, that they remember that they hold, Seeing if people will actually act upon them, act upon what they feel and what they say, whether I'll do the same. I don't know what the coming weeks, months, years, decades hold for me. I said this or something similar to this in my Things Are Uncertain Leaving Toronto Alone video seven months ago. I don't know. I don't know. I have no clue. I've made it this far.
I'm still fucking alive. I'm not happy. I'm not in a good state at all, mentally, psychologically at all, philosophically. I'm not in a good state at all. Financially, I'm not in a good state. I'm impoverished. I couldn't afford a studio apartment if I tried in, well, in Ottawa, more specifically. Really, I don't think anywhere in Canada with the current state of the economy. No, I could not. No, are you fucking kidding? I'd be broke within like three months. But one thing is certain to me, at least right now. Well, anti-prom to Claritin, what I was. I don't make any promises for anything. But one thing is, I will try to not do this. I will not kill myself until I am... Um, See this world. And if I find hope, well, then I won't kill myself. Or whatever whatever way hopefulness comes to me, if any major amount of it does. Uh, well. This is how I guess my life is going to go. Either I'll find no hope in humanity and life getting better and I'll off myself. I'll find some amount of hope. I'll make a decision on how to live my life, how morally I feel I should live and others socially should live and go from there. I'll find that humanity is really just overall detrimental and become some extremist misanthropist who maybe seeks goal to kill as many people as possible to rid this planet of our existence. Or I'll... Or I'll die trying. Just wandering this world. That's really the... If I'm really looking at it, those are the really only... Those are the only four options to life. Let's look at it in, in just the... Ontological essence of that. Uh, you either... You either become content with the way things are and you just suffer through them you become discontent and you try to change the situation you're in you hurt others to try and either get them to understand or just to get them away from you to help better your situation. Or you die. Either by your own hand or someone else's. Or by the environment's hand. Your unfortunate circumstances. That's really it. That's really... Those are the really only in complete essence the four paths of life.
So, I'm not committing suicide until I see what is out there for me and others. I'm not. That's really the essence of my existential and morality crisis. My the purpose of my travels. I'm not gonna kill myself until I see if there is actually something better than this. I'll try my best to not hurt others. In whatever ways, I will try. Believe me. With how I don't want to burden people already, it burdens me to use the structural systems that have been set up, even for, for my own benefit. I always have... I have a constant cognitive dissidence. So, but I, I will try. And in trying in some way to help others along this quest for knowledge, I guess you can call it. Uh, as I've said before, I am now a self-employed medic. My main fields of expertise are in psychology, neurology, neuropsychology, sexology, psychosexology. And I will also try and help in the varying other fields of medical work in what ways I can.
There's a lot of other over-the-counter medical supplies in there. Gauze. Rubbing alcohol infused wound pads. Anti-inflammatory cream, anti-fungal, and anti- Some antibiotic ointments. Painkillers. I was wrong. I initially thought that uh, this came with a blood pressure monitor, a self pump one. It uh, doesn't. I tried to find one local area, but I couldn't get. But I did buy an oxygen and pulse finger reader and a no contact thermometer. And uh, right now I have a pack of latex gloves and I bought extra medical masks So, as well, it's another thing I have to, uh, I want to state. I've already talked about um, my goals for this year. Trying to be less vocally angry or aggressive when I am angry. <sighs> Cutting my parents out of my life for the time that I am on my travels. However long I may be. try to stop self-actualizing so much vocally and just in my everyday situations as much as I really can or that I feel I need to. If I get into an issue with police, not uh, manipulating them in any way. Also, trying not to call the police for anything. Try and deal with it myself, whatever situation I'm in. I'll call an ambulance if I need an ambu ambulance. Or if I'm treating a patient on the streets with whatever... whatever resources I have and, and any means that I can. If someone needs an ambulance, I will call for an ambulance. Or if there's a fire, I will call the fire brigade. <sighs> but, uh, not police. If I can help it.
you saw my reiterating my goals. I have made a decision. I've revised my travel plans slightly. I said over the course of the last, uh, I'd say maybe four or five months, uh, that once I leave Ottawa, come late spring, early summer around there, ideally. I'm going to try and make my way through the Canadian province of Quebec up to Labrador City and the Labrador landmass uh, territory of the province of Labrador, Newfoundland. And then from there, try and hitch a flight, I guess, up to or a, a boat ride. Callowit Nunavut, and I've though said that's just my destination as of right now. Not that I plan to stay there, or it's not. It wasn't of the idea I get there and then I'll just live there, or uh, then head back to Toronto or anything like that. No, originally it was just I get there and then I figure out what to do. Well. At that point, where else to go if I haven't resolved my well existential and morality crisis? I haven't found any sort of hopefulness that any sort of answers that'll uh, satisfy my dissatisfaction with the contradictory behavior of well, people and systems. But I've decided on something else. I know now um, where I'm gonna try to go uh, from That is international. Whether I have the proper documentation or whether I have a new passport or not. As you probably know by now, another thing I love is geography. Oh, wrong pocket. And culture researching culture. Well, if I'm gonna explore this world, see if there's any benefit in the human race. Well, obviously, the human race is not just localized to Canada. It's a very wide, vast country multicultural, bountiful, different practices and tradition, ethnic, different ethnic groups, indigenous groups, but uh, Canada is not the only country obviously in the world. I've loved researching other places for so long, but uh, now decided, and I did before, have plans for many years of traveling to some specific countries in particular. But I've added more, and now I've decided once I reach Iqaluit, if I reach Iqaluit, Somehow I'm going to try and get to all these places. I'll list them now. 
Angola. This country, southwestern Africa. I'm wondering if I should talk a bit about them. Well, yeah, I guess. It's been very prominent, at least in my eyes, in terms of economically beneficial cap communistic or socialistic systems. However, those have been breaking down over the last few decades. Well, decade, I'll say, sadly. I'll just list what I can. So Angola, it's one. French Guiana, South America. It's where cayenne pepper comes from. The capital city is called Cayenne. I'm sure most people don't know that here. an autonomous state of France. They've long wanted full independence. Western Sahara. Northwestern Africa. In the Sahara Desert. Borders Morocco. It's an autonomous state of Morocco. There was civil conflict and still is a multitude of civil conflict there of separatist groups who want complete and total sovereignty from Morocco. The Shuari people are the main ethnic group of the country. Right below it. Mauritania, Northwestern Africa. It's been very prominent in terms of artistic creation in the Islamic world. It's known for its many poets and writers. It also historically was legally, in terms of government, Last abolished slavery or enslavement of people. There was legal enslavement of women in uh, Mauritania all the way up until 1980. Yep, 1980. Now, obviously, enslavement still exists to this day, and mass there's mass government endorsement of it. Across the globe, but just in a historical context. Turkmenistan, Central Asia, the Middle East. Many will regard as, and I regard it as well, the, in terms of societal structuring, the most strange country on the planet. In some foreign cultural traditions as well that have been influenced from the government. But it also has a wide variety of incredible, in my opinion, cultural traditions. Just, well, within its indigenous people's own practices over the centuries. houses the city of Ashgabat, which is made entirely out of white marble. And it's also a very empty city because there are many districts that are completely devoid of any actual buildings with a purpose, just for decoration.
they have actually, as of current, they've elected a new president. Sadar Bertiam Mohamedow, son of Corbin Bouli Bertiam Mohamedow, who won in a rigged election because uh, his father has complete control of the country. And I don't doubt that he's been indoctrinated by his sociopathic and egotistical father, who also absolutely has eccentric behavioral, behavioral disorder. Um, and, uh, well, I, I don't doubt that Sadar is just a puppet for his father to have political influence over the country. Maybe Corbin Bowie's in poor health or something, that's why he stepped down. I don't know. Uh, Afghanistan, also in Central Asia. You'll know it as recently the Taliban retook control over the country. Which is very sad to me. There have been mass protests from women and men. And people of the LGBTQ plus community as well. Within the country. Against the Taliban. Their roles of trying to put in a Islamic theocracy. is delicious. So is Kabuli. <sighs> People from everything I've researched are incredibly heartwarming and friendly. As with pretty well every country on this list. Beneficial and detrimental people, obviously, in all of them, but get my point, I think. Sudan, in Central East Africa. Mm, well, this could fully count as East. Uh, right below Egypt, has great nightlife, party life in the cities. Or a high prevalence on it, at least. Culturally. And, uh, has a wide variety of their own styling of pyramids. Culturally, there are women in the country known as the, what is it, the Tea Ladies, I believe. Where many of the major cities, especially the like, um, Khartoum, the capital, uh, will sit in booths, street sides, and, well, grow tea herbs in little pots in the actual, well, booths, sell it, sell freshly made tea. South Sudan, I think you can guess where it's located. Home to the tallest ethnic group in the world, the Dinka. Governmentally, has been in a lot of conflict with conflict with uh, Sudan, and has even had its own internal political conflict as well. Traditionally, though, in terms of culture, they have a high prevalence on sports, especially in basketball. It's very uh, celebrated sport throughout the country. There's also a uh, Heavy prevalence on agricultural life. 
and agricultural work. Gabon in central western Africa. former French colony. So it, was, it had heavy historical prevalence, the land area during World War I as a tactical well, base of operations. It's sort of a mix culturally, I'd say, between Almost like a mix between Caribbean culture and, um, well, other West African influence in terms of culture that had been brought over from colonialist times, along with indigenous influence. Jordan in Asia, in the Middle East. has a very big entertainment in industry in the region. A lot of shows are produced there. Culturally, uh, it's very divided between progressive and conservative outlooks in terms of Muslim belief. I think I'm just gonna rapid fire the rest. Taiwan, in Eastern Asia, Iran, in the Middle East, Central Asia, Iraq, right, right beside Iran, in the Middle East, Rwanda, Africa, Russia. Europe and Asia, it's Eurasia country. It stems between the continents, mainly because of its uh, Siberian landmass. Kyrgyzstan in Asia, part of the former Soviet Union, just like Russia. Oh yes, yeah, and Turkmenistan is also part of the former Soviet Union. Tasmania, Oceania. San Marino in Europe, third smallest country in the world, completely landlocked by Italy. It has a lot of uh, industrial factories on it, along its borders from Italian mega corporations. Benin in Africa, Mongolia in Asia, known for a lot of throat singing in terms of its traditional music. Horse riding as well is common practice in the rural areas. Wales, Europe, Togo, Africa, Vatican, Europe, another landmark country by Italy, world's smallest country. Liechtenstein in Europe, sixth smallest country in well. Four smallest in Europe. Chile in South America. China, Eastern Asia. Suriname, South America. Palestine, in Asia. Eswatini in Africa, formerly known as Swaziland. Madagascar, in Africa, island nation, part of the African continent. Kosovo, in Europe, 
borders Serbia and has had many, many governmental and territorial disputes with them. North Macedonia, Europe. Both Kosovo and North Macedonia are part of former Yugoslavia. Armenia in Asia and the Middle East. Northwestern Asia. Azerbaijan. Asia as well. They have had mass political conflict. Uh, and they're both part of the former Soviet Union. Guinea Bissau in Africa. Bhutan in Asia. The only Buddhist theocracy in the world. Brunei in Asia. Cyprus in Europe. Djibouti in Africa. Colombia in South America. Puerto Rico in North America in the Caribbean. Belize, North America. Central America, Luxembourg, Europe, Mali in Africa, Kuwait in Asia, Ukraine in Europe. I don't care if there's a war going on there. I used to be in the mindset that uh, if a country's governmental system was more strictly, blatantly totalitarian, that I would avoid traveling to it for the time being, or if there was heavy political conflict within the country, such as war, that I would avoid traveling to it. Nothing against the people, just with how dangerous things could get. I've said fuck it to that by this point. I care far more about the cultural experience and meeting people there than I do about how dangerous it's become because of the political conflict. In my mindset, I could go to some place like Somalia that has been one of the longest and most brutal civil conflicts in terms of civil wars in all of history. Mass military uh, well, militant carnage from different militia factions and, uh, well, broken up governmental divisions fighting each other. I could go there and to the capital city of Mogadishu and be completely fine, scave off any, uh, well, large danger, and then I could, say, come back here to Ottawa and, uh, well, walk down the wrong alley and get mugged and shot within just the span of two hours of me landing back. That's my mindset. Belarus, Europe, Tibet, in Asia, Oman, in Asia, the Middle East, and Greenland, North America. That list wasn't in any particular order. That wasn't until I'm going to try and hit these countries. Trying to gonna try and travel to them. By legal means or by illegal means. By hopping borders or obtaining official documentation. Uh, that wasn't in any particular order. That was just what I had typed out. July 
achieve that? Who knows? But uh, I feel that's well, that makes 50 countries, so that'll cover my basis in terms of seeing a large portion of humanity firsthand. I'm going to link, uh, five videos in the description. Videos that I think, uh, oh. Helps sum up a lot of my feelings Uh, where I'm at psychologically and philosophically right now. Um, one is by, I've talked about him before, I'm not going to remember how to say his tag completely, or his channel name, XHC Hat Guy. I talked about him in my Before Leaving the Kaj videos. It will be that video that I mentioned that he created about, uh, what is it, eight years ago now, or no, probably nine years ago, yeah, nine. Uh, it's titled, The Paradox of Social Idealism. I'll link another one by YouTuber called Felix Skira, titled, You Can't Let uh, something along the lines, you can't let nihilism and depression hold you back from things. He said something in the video. Um, w one of the major things he said in the video that really resonated with me is uh, often he talked to people at, say, work or in his social settings about things that he valued or that he was were just on his mind and uh in his life many people would just say yep i totally agree with you on that and then they'd go right back to doing whatever the hell they were doing before Another one is by, I'm sure many of you know him, Markiplier, Mark Fishback. A video he made a few years ago, 2018. It was just titled, uh, If You're Feeling Down, Watch This. Well, it's helped me a lot at points. especially throughout this, when I've been able to access Wi-Fi. Uh, well, when I can, through this whole trek. Another one is by a man named Dwayne. His channel is called Dry Creek Wrangler School. He owns a uh, equestrian training school in the United States. It's on the topic of critically thinking, critical thought, engaging in it, trying to engage in it, and think for yourself. And the other one is a poem slash, I guess, edited together music video that a person named, uh, uh, what is it, Skoria? I believe, I, I can't remember it right now, I haven't seen any of their other videos, but I found it a few months back and I, well, I can say I thoroughly enjoyed it. I'll link all those in the description. I implore everyone watching this to go watch those videos. And 
I don't know about the last person I just mentioned, Scuria, or uh, I haven't checked out a lot more of their content, but you should, if you like that video, try and see their other, their content. And I also encourage you to check out Hack Guy's videos that he made on his original channel. I got his second channel by the same name because he lost access to that one years ago. Uh, Felix Skira, encourage you to watch his stuff and Black Creek Wrangler School. I don't agree with obviously everything that uh, Lane says, but, um, or anyone, any two people say, but. Oh, well, sampling hand marks video. Why not? There's a very scary theory in psychology. It's a scary theory to me. It relates to epistemology. It's called the theory of intellectual zombies. And it states that uh, there are only a handful of people in the world, or there are only certain people that are actually physically cap physiologically capable of high level critical thought like neurologically th their neurons can only process so much in the prefrontal cortex which is involved for critical thinking now many of my what were my political beliefs say well cam yeah most people in the world are stupid in our opinion, so why is that so disturbing? Why is that so frightening? Well, that means that uh, every thing you try to fight for uh, politically and just beliefs, that values moralistically that you hold uh, and you think people should act upon and that you try and uh, encourage people to engage in in your daily lives uh, it's all pointless. It means that, um, in terms of just sociological benefit, if you're involved with political movements of any kind, um, that, uh, well, they won't come to fruition. Or at the very least, in terms of my belief towards optimum utopianism, that possibility is not even a possibility. It's not even there. It, um, means that even if something sociologically or just in a social environment in any set any systematic or systemic thing set up even if for a while it did maintain a beneficial status it was producing the most amount of efficiency that it possibly could um, inevitably it will tumble to the ground because uh, well because someone, either because of a mental disorder, behavioral disorder, personality disorder, maybe even a physiological problem, physiological illness, disorder of any kind, or a neurological disease, um, or misinterpretation, misunderstanding from someone else's perspective, or someone else's intentions, um, one way or another, they're not uh, able to engage in mass level or beneficial, really true beneficial critical thought, and uh, it will all just tumble down. The theory states that, well, as I said, that there are only, that there are very few people that can actually really truly analyze and deduce more helpful things for the world. Which means that um, a lot of what uh, people believe will never come true because most likely 
majority of the people you meet on a daily or talk to or try to share, uh, try and engage in a dialogue with, um, will never really understand what you truly want out of it, mean by it, or they'll just manipulate it for their own selfish gain to make themselves appear, well, in a histrionic way, right in their image, or just feel as though, or they'll just follow your beliefs because they want to be on the honorable side of, well, human morality or political history. If that theory was ever proven to be true, well, I don't know what I'd do. That is awful. Maybe I'll find that that theory is true on this journey. Or maybe I'll find the opposite. I don't know. Oh, yes. Another little announcement. This has been on my mind for a while. Talk about it probably more later. In relation to my original career of wanting to be a sex worker, and also in my relation to my morals regarding sexuality and sexual expression, um, or just my philosophies in general, what they were. Another one that I held that I really forgot to talk about in more depth is um, nudism. And I've also talked about before how I don't believe, I didn't believe that um, obviously nudity is not inherently sexual. Nudity obviously can be sexual, but it's not in and of itself, its nature, sexual. In, well, just its how it exists. It's something that is a part of well, everyone's lives, obviously. And well, we're born that way. And I believe nudism is actually incredibly healthy for you. To just be naked with yourself or with others in a non-sexual way and in a sexual way either or depending on the circumstance now obviously clothes are not bad by any means in my opinion I'd be frozen solid um, if I didn't if I wasn't wearing what I am now in this weather but there have been people who have just for centuries who have lived naked, without any sort of major protection in terms of their clothing, because they didn't have to because of the climates that they were in. In relation to that, and other things that I had felt, I want to talk more about it at a certain point in the future, along with just, I guess, some prediction. Well, talk about the essence of nudity nudity both in a non-sexual and sexual way. And you know what? I'm gonna, well, hopefully YouTube's guidelines aren't gonna cause a problem with this, as it wasn't a problem prior that a non-sexual nudity is allowed on YouTube. Still as of right now is. But, um, yeah, at some point in the future, um, Obviously, when the warmer months come, and I'm getting closer to leaving Ottawa, I'll, if I can, I'll get naked for a video. And just, yeah, talk about nudism, and be naked non-sexually for the video. Just be unclothed, uncensored. And also, I guess, along with talking about nudism and just the nature of nudity, sexual nudity, and just you, in essence, physiologically, or 
nude bodies. Uh, I'm also going to talk about just predictions, I guess, maybe that I have for the future of different things. Just to have something to talk about and engage in other topics not relating to nudity whilst being naked. Just as I wanted to talk about that for a while. Be more comfortable for me as well. Obviously, when I do that, I'm going to go somewhere uh, in nature. Well, I will do it outside, uh, somewhere more discreet, because I know there are people who are uncomfortable with it. I could analyze the psychology of that, which I have before, but either way. It's also, though, public nudity is sadly illegal in Canada. There's some leniency uh, with being topless if you have a more feminine body type. Um, no matter what gender you are, um, there's some leeway in, on, in the province of Ontario with it, but it's only slightly. So, um, yeah, I'll find a, a more inconspicuous place to um, get naked and film, and talk. <sighs> Please, um... Think about your life. Think about the nature of things. Try as hard as you can to engage in critical thought. Analyze things. Never turn off your brain, quote unquote. Never do that. Doesn't matter how painful it is, please don't. From what I've seen, it causes far more problems. Try and self self reflect when you can. And enjoy your evening. I should start practicing with this more often, considering I bought it in case I was ever to go broke. And just for our own entertainment. Might be because my fingers are going numb. tried.